Hello, and welcome to this tutorial video on how to perform item response theory analysis with the software Excalibur 4.1. Excalibur 4.1 is produced by Assessment Systems Corporation and can perform both dichotomous and polytomous, or mixed dichotomous and polytomous, analyses with item response theory. In addition to producing spreadsheets of the parameter output, it makes a detailed Microsoft Word report complete with inserted tables, graphics, and narratives to help you efficiently evaluate the quality of your assessment. To start with Excalibur 4, double click on Excalibur 4.1.exe or whatever relevant version you are working with. You'll see that the program is divided into six tabs that you work through in order to specify what you want to see with your input and with your output. Uh, there is also uh, drop-down menus for some advanced options up here on the top left. And the license button here is what you would use to uh, unlock or extend your license. Excalibur works with two input files. The first is the data matrix file, which is the typical file you're used to working with as a psychometrician, which of course has uh, examinees for rows and items for columns. And each cell in the matrix is the response of an examinee to an item. I will go into the sample file here and show you one of those. As the example in this tutorial, I'll be using a mixed format data set to show you both dichotomous and polydomous results. So this data file here has six columns at the beginning that are examinee ID. So you can see first one is examinee 1, this row is examinee 10, this row is examinee 33. Then after that, we have 50 dichotomously scored data points, and then we have 20 polydomously scored points. So what this test is approximating is, let's say, an educational assessment where you've got 50 multiple choice items, and then 20 items that are scored with partial credit, such as being open response, short answer, essay, or mathematic types items. So you must arrange your data file to either be a text file like this or a CSV spreadsheet. If it's a text file, you need to note how many columns are for the item ID or examinee IDs and which column the actual data begins in. And in this case, we have six columns of ID and the data begins in column number seven. You then need to also prepare a control file. The control file provides information about the items that helps analyze them better or in a more detailed manner. The first few columns here are the item ID. In this case, the item is simply named dichotomous 1. And then we have a few more pieces of information, which include the key, the number of alternatives, uh, the domain of the item, if you have multiple domains or content areas, whether you want the item inc included in the analysis, uh, by switching this Y to an N is an easy way to delete the item from the analysis without having to delete the entire column from the data matrix. And then the uh, type of item. Item types include multiple choice, partial credit, and a rating scale. So let us go back to Excalibur. And we will open that mixed data that we just looked at, and then also the mixed control that we just looked at. And we can run an analysis, and let's just call it mixed IRT for now. And then you can provide a run title if you like. In this case, we might call it mixed IRT also. And then from now on, you're specifying details about what you want to see with your input and output. We have some output choices down here, such as saving the item parameters in a .par, .text, or CSV file, which is useful for importing to do other programs, such as um, item banking or online testing programs, saving the distractor and item information function graphs to a separate file, saving scored item responses. So if you have multiple choice items and you want to save the scored response matrix, you can do so, and also resaving the item control file. We'll then proceed to the input format. And 
And as I previously mentioned, we have six examinee ID columns, and the item responses begin in column number seven. You can change the omit character and the non-administered character to work with whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, in this case, we have zero for an omit and a dash for a non-administered. You could also put a N for non-administered. Um, if you prefer working in a different language other than English, you can even put uh, different letters for whatever omit and non-administered mean in your language. Uh, we then have a choice down here for including differential item functioning analysis. Uh, what this means is that suppose you had a column in your data matrix that was male and female, so a column in the text file that was M or F for each examinee. You could do a item, differential item functioning analysis to look at the result of each item with males versus females. You can then choose uh, our, the model we want to look at. And uh, you can work with both dichotomous models and polytomous models, but as I mentioned in this case, we're going to work with a mixed model in that we have 50 dichotomous items to use the three parameter and 20 items with which to use the generalized partial credit model. So these are the two most generalized models to use on this type of data. We'll see how these fit. If you like, you could run the program multiple times on different competing models and compare the results. We'll then proceed to the calibration tab where you can choose the prior distributions for the A parameter, the B parameter, and the C parameter. These are just defaults. You can change these to be different priors if you want to. For example, if you know that the type of data you work with typically has an average A parameter of 0.8, you could put in 0.8 here as the mean expected A parameter. And because we're dealing with, let's say, four option multiple choice here, we're assuming that the mean C parameter is going to be 0.25. Uh, but if your items have a different number of alternatives, you can specify using one over the null for alternatives, and it would update appropriately. The use of floating priors means that as the analysis progresses through different rounds of estimation, priors will be updated based upon the results of previous rounds. You can then choose uh, how long you want your calibration to go and how detailed you want the results, or how accurate. The IRT analysis is done in loops, which means that the analysis We'll do one loop, estimate the results, check to see how it fits, and then if it uh, is not sufficient, it will go do a whole other loop of re-estimating the theta parameters and the item parameters. And you can set the maximum number of loops, because if you have very poor fitting data, Excalibur might go 100 or 200 loops and never reach a satisfactory result. So you have to set a maximum of, let's say, in this case, 60 loops, or you could even go as low as 20 loops. Uh, a related thing is the convergence criterion, and this is when you would like Excalibur to stop in terms of item parameter uh, accuracy. So uh, item parameters are re-estimated at the end of every loop, and it will then check to see how much each item parameter has changed. Uh, and if every item parameter has changed by less than this criterion, it will stop. So for example, if our maximum is 20 loops, but it finds after 14 loops that no item has changed by more than 0 0.001. It says, okay, we've already reached a stable result and we can stop here at 14 loops. We don't have to go all the way to 20. The number of quadrature points is the number of um, points on the theta scale that you divide the sample up into groups. And more quadrature points in general will lead to a finer grained analysis of the data. However, you need to also consider your sample size, so that if you have a sample size of, let's say, 400 students, and we have 40 quadrature points, that means that we're dividing it into 40 groups, so there's only 10 students in each group, and 10 students is a pretty small sample size. So in this case, we have 1,000 students in our data matrix, so we might want to reduce this to, let's say, 20 quadrature points, which would mean that there would be 50 in each group. You then have a choice of whether you want to center to that dichotomous item parameters on theta for a more true IRT analysis, or if you want to center on B for a wash style analysis. You can set flags or a sort of gateway of which items you want to include in the IRT calibration by placing bounds on the classical statistics. So for example, if you do not want to include any items with a p-value of less than 0.4 in your analysis, 
you could specify that here. Uh, the same goes for the item mean range for the polytomous items, which is conceptually similar to the p-value, but not exactly the same because it ranges above 1. Um, you can also specify the item correlation range, for example, if we do not want to include any items with a negative point per serial. You have a choice of whether you want to include a spuriousness correction in the item total to store correlations. Um, and you can also exclude items for calibration if the number of valid responses is less than a certain number. Uh, this is useful if you did a pilot test with, let's say, um, randomly chosen items. So you've got a bank of 200 items. Every student saw 100 items that were randomly chosen from the bank. And there might be some items in the analysis that did not have a sufficient number of responses, and you can decide to exclude those. Uh, we can then choose the theta estimation method. Uh, maximum likelihood is the most common. And we can compute scaled scores if we wanted to transfer these to a scaled score. Uh, you have a choice of producing a two-group classification in the output. So for example, we want to have a cut point of zero for pass or fail can specify it like this. Fail and pass. And let's say we want to use the theta estimate. Um, then you have a choice of which output files you want to include. As a default, it will produce us the overall narrative summary file in Microsoft Word rich text file. Um, but you can also produce the item statistics themselves into their own CSV or tab delimited file. You could produce the examinee scores and subscores into a CSV or tab delimited file. You can output the test information function to its own file, as well as a large table of the item information functions into their own file. You have a choice of whether you want to plot the item response functions for each item in the summary output. Doing so, of course, will increase the size of the file because you're inserting an image for every item in your test into the output. But of course, uh, using the image makes it a lot easier to interpret the results, so I recommend producing the plots. And on top of producing the theoretical item response function, you can plot the empirical item response function, also known as non-parametric IRT, by dividing the sample into a number of groups and then plotting the proportion of students in each group who responded correctly or with a certain polydomous response. So let's say we're going to do this as a line. We'll create equally score, sized score groups. And because we utilize 20 quadrature points, let's say we're going to use 20 points for these. Now we can then hit the Run button. You can see it progressing through the loops. And the maximum change will shrink with each loop, usually. Not, it's not always the case, but if you have a decent fitting data set, it will shrink slightly for each one. And in this case, you can see we did not reach the criterion of 0 0.001 before it reached the maximum of 20 loops. So it says we're going to stop after 20 loops and not proceed any further. The program will then save all the output files that you specified here, as well as that summary output file, and then allow you to go through and review results. Yep. But however, we will not include that in this tutorial video that will be in the next tutorial video. So this tutorial video focuses just on the running of Excalibur 4.1. If you wish to learn more about Excalibur or to purchase it, it's available online at www.assess.com. That is A-S-S-E-S-S dot -S 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 com. Thank you.